Welcome out to Keen Trace for the Barbasol Championship. If you were with us yesterday, you know that during our coverage, at least during the noon hour, we were dodging some showers and storms. We had a big round go through into the afternoon. Today, it's been a little more quiet. Did track a few showers and some heavy rain that came through here earlier this morning, but it has cleared out and it's turning into a beautiful summer day. Still just a little on the steamy side. A new severe thunderstorm warning. I told you I'd be breaking in a lot. Uh, we've got this batch coming through Winchester and Mount Sterling and also down through Richmond. You can see it tracking pretty much due east. They've expanded the severe thunderstorm warning out for Estill, Menifee, Montgomery and Powell County through 130. These storms have been showing just a little bit in the way of signs of rotation there, an indication you could have some damaging wind. Welcome back. This weekend's headliner at Lexington's Comedy Off Broadway is here. Right here she is. It's, oh. it's, oh, geez, it's real <laughs> Linnell. <laughs> she is giving me major, I must, like. Let's add some lint right there. Yeah, uh, she yeah, was yeah, you, you got some right here, too. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. <laughs> Lunell is here. We are so glad. So, what are we tracking over the next three days? Well, very unsettled weather. The potential for multiple rounds of showers, thunderstorms. Top end of the threat list is going to be the possibility of some torrential rainfall. There could also be, though, some strong to maybe borderline severe storms. Just a quick rundown on what's going on weather-wise to show you what's up. We've got some rain. We've got that mixed precipitation out west. Uh, meteorologist Jill Sweat is in. Bill will be in. We're keeping a close eye on this, but I've been talking this morning about how we're getting that drier air cutting in. That could help initially limit the ice accumulation. There's the snow out west, but as we go back over to the desk, we uh, thought you guys might use a little bit of a care package here. Yeah. Okay. So uh, oh Jill's actually gosh. helping me out. So. Uh, Catherine ran to Walmart. She did an emergency run. So oh. there, there's yours. Oh. There's yours. You know how fragile that's, this is. That's that's two percent. We didn't want to go with a whole milk leak, so we know you know old man issues mm -hmm. might cause you some gastric disturbance there. And if Does that's that the happen? case, then okay, oh my got, gosh, you got a little TP. <laughs> yeah. And I was out working with my kids in the yard yesterday, and I said, Hey kids, take this big stick and go over to that pine tree. And they did, and this was the result. <laughs> you can. <laughs> The exact same effect, but uh, that's my pine tree in my backyard, and you can literally just see these clouds of pollen, and no trees were injured in the making of this video. Okay. Tom Ackerman here as well, and he and the Max Track Doppler both a little busy this morning. Yeah, just the two of us. Yeah. In the storm track just weather, so. the two of us. We can make it if we try. <laughs> we <should> make, it. <laughs> make it storm, right? Uh, we got showers and storms to track this morning. You can see them up over Indiana. They're there, and they're on the move, and we've already had to deal with some late in the weekend, and guess what? We have more on the way. A, a huge part of what we do is just getting people involved in the outdoors. Uh, and Are you kidding me? <laughs> the mighty hunter. One of us was in the military and one wasn't. I'll give you one guess. One more shot. I think we're out of time. We're out of time? I'm okay. going to take another shot during the break, everybody. Thank you, Britt. Thank you, Olivia. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much for having us out again. Right, again, if you're you. interested, uh, Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife, right? Yeah. All right. We'll be right back. I always have big shoes to fill whenever I'm stepping in the role for Tom. I mean, he certainly has his own style. This is pretty much home for me. Every day we strive to bring the most accurate and detailed storm tracker forecast that we can. This is the newest Goes R calendar. What's Goes R? Not Gozer from Ghostbusters. That was my first thought. Yeah. Not gonna lie. It's the Goes R series, the geostationary operational environmental satellite calendar, the newest generation. This is. You can get that right, but you can't get is, my job title yeah, that's true. right. Sorry. Well, I'm I'm a dork, and this is weather nerd material right here, and this is really cool. It's they send it to us every year. I usually get a copy or two from uh, okay. Jet Propulsion Laboratory. The Future Track's been having trouble latching onto exactly how this is going to play out. There's still quite a bit of uncertainty there, but I think pretty much between maybe dinner and midnight and then maybe again early tomorrow morning, we'll have a round of strong to severe storms. And if you watch, this is around 1 o'clock. Watch what happens later on this evening. Diving out of the northwest. Now, don't pay so much attention to the timing, but just the uh, presentation here. This uh, very distinct bow, that is an indication of um, a uh, within a line of severe storms, an indication of some of the strongest winds aloft getting yanked down and maybe translated to the surface, which basically means we could see some damaging wind gusts. This one's pretty loaded. This one, this one's beautiful, actually, look at that. So that's capped honey. 
you can see where there's still some open cells where they didn't put anything in it, but all these other cells have nectar, you know, the pollen, everything that they use to make the honey, and then they cap it and it, it cures after a certain amount of time. But they filled both sides of this one in very nicely. That's beautiful. I wish, wish they were all like that. Mm -hmm. So, one more. I had to burn my finger. Somebody wants to know if it's going to be difficult to clean up when we're done. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we've got ongoing severe thunderstorms out there. The rain is coming down hard and heavy. Our Lexington Center weather bug camera shows that we're swamped out there, and we've got a storm right over northern Fayette County. This one not severe, but frequent lightning and heavy rain out there. And one lone severe thunderstorm warning out there. Now, there have been some signs with this storm, especially as it's moved east of Flemingsburg into uh, parts of Lewis County of some rotation there. So uh, there's the potential, as we've seen with a number of storms this morning, for some rotation aloft. And uh, we are under a tornado watch in spot. So we're keeping an eye on that. A severe thunderstorm warning in effect for Lewis County. That one's actually heading up into southern Ohio. You can see the general motion. There's a tornado watch in effect. Now we're showing it northern counties expiring at 7 a.m. We're showing it southwest and extending into Tennessee, but it's also been issued uh, extended here into central Kentucky. So once the weather computer catches up to the uh, Storm Prediction Center, we'll get an update on that tornado watch for you. And the concern here is we have one diminishing round of showers and storms. Remember how I talked about how it was going to be in multiple waves today? We've got this diminishing round of showers and storms northeast, but we've got another strong line of severe storms. Now I think the primary threat with this wave as we get into the mid morning with round two is going to be damaging straight line wind gusts, but there's still the potential, especially southwestern sides of the viewing area. Some of these spots that haven't been as worked over as far as the atmosphere is concerned by morning convection that may see uh, some potential rotation within those storms and a uh, tornado threat. They have practiced clearly and they know these moves very well. So it's over a minute long. Yeah. Uh -huh. He's probably got maybe uh, I don't know, 15, 20 kids in his class uh -huh. if, if they're lucky and it's a smaller classroom. That could be a long end. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah, like, I didn't want to come up with lesson plans for the last <laughs> half right, of the day. Go. <laughs> Good Friday. Yeah. Friday. <laughs> Good for him. I like that strategy. <laughs> All right, 644, and, and all right, we got to deal with a little bit of humidity yeah. this weekend. I know it's it, at some point you knew this comfortable, beautiful weather was going to have to come to Good an end. Good for the pool. Yeah, I mean, definitely. it hasn't exactly been nice pool weather because you want the mugginess up there. You don't want to get chilly when no. you get out. So, right. you know, putting a positive spin on it, the sticky stuff, not great for being out on the back porch, but wonderful at the pool. And this is the uh, big blue building downtown, extreme close up. Uh, you can see the sky, of course, getting brighter, reflected in the windows there. And it is, it's a very nice morning. I mean, we're in for just a very summery weekend. We're going to have two developments. We'll hold on to the heat. We've been in the 80s. Uh, but the developments are going to be the increase in humidity and also the chance for showers and storms. Let's run through everything that's going on. Uh, all the active weather north and west. This is cloud cover that you're looking at here. The brighter colors, an indication of the uh, colder cloud tops where the stronger storms, deeper convection is. So there's some showers, some storms. This is where most of the action's been out toward the Great Plains down through Dallas. You can see uh, from last night into this morning, severe storms blossoming. They had damaging wind and hail again. Parts of Oklahoma and Texas getting hammered uh, yesterday. And then we go down south, the eastern Pacific. Look at this. This is Aleta. Uh, this storm just absolutely blew up, and you can see over the past 12 hours the development of it. In fact, it took less than 12 hours for it to go from a tropical storm to a major hurricane. It's now a Category 3 hurricane this morning. Uh, so that's out in the Pacific. The Atlantic here, uh, we don't have a whole lot going on as of yet, and uh, we're still waiting on some development there. Our enhanced to slight risk for severe storms across the Plain States holds out there. So we've got this marginal risk that traces right out along a stationary frontal boundary. And uh, that'll be the focus for storms just to our north. It'll hold them off today. High pressure is our influence as it tracks off toward the east coast. We will see an increase in our south to southwesterly wind flow. We'll see an increase in humidity. We'll see an increase in just general uncomfortable uh, humidity levels. Now, there's some showers popping south of Columbus. This is where we'll see the activity today along that boundary I just showed you. So we don't have to really worry about that today. But eventually we will see a better chance for at least some showers and storms, scattered stuff. Isolated tomorrow. This is it all around the edges today. As you get into Saturday, look out. There may be an isolated shower storm popping into the afternoon. Again, most folks won't be impacted. That high is still in control. 
As the high pushes east, though, we get a little more weakness in the overall pattern, and we will see a better chance for scattered showers and storms Sunday and then into Monday. So get ready for that. Visibility, we're doing okay. There's some fog out around Ashland. Temperature-wise, we're running in the 50s and 60s. And as far as the humidity goes, this is the dew point. Look what happened Saturday afternoon. We're in the low 70s. And if you watch the muggy meter there, the uh, gauge of how m uh, humid it is, by the end of the weekend, Sunday, we've got dew points in the low to mid 70s. That's some sticky stuff. So you're going to notice through the weekend that humidity just steadily rising. And it's just going to get steamier and steamier as we go. We're in the mid to upper 80s today. At times, the heat index could push the low to even mid 90s. Western counties, I think a lot of us will see heat index values, what it feels like around probably the low 90s. So this is an extreme, but it's our first real summery weekend tracking our way. Watch for those end of the weekend shower and storm chances. And you think the heat's done? Oh, you're wrong. We're going to be in the potentially upper 80s to even low 90s toward the middle of next week. So even hotter days potentially out there toward the end of the 8th.